If you're looking to make your designs a little bit more interesting, a little bit more textured and a little bit more dynamic, I have a tutorial for you of a brand new Canva feature that is blowing me away. No longer do you need to find elements in Canva to overlay them on your designs and lose half of your design. Now we can do it with a couple of clicks, a couple of pre-made settings in a way that looks totally professional. So let's dive in. Hello, if we have not met before, my name is Jackie. I'm a graphic designer who's all about making sure that you start using Canva strategically for your business. So you're no longer wasting hours just clicking around in Canva, hoping for the best, but you start using Canva strategically and design strategically. And by strategically, I mean to grow your business, to get your audience to notice you, to get your audience to pay attention and to get them to click and to purchase what you have to offer, because that's how powerful design is when you do it right. And if that sounds like something you'd love help with, make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for all of my free videos and resources here. So this is how I I used to do things where I'd overlay a picture on top. I'm going to show you how to do that now. And this is what things can look like when we do it now. So let's have a look at the options. If I go into my Canva, I've just inserted an image into my design. This is just a little picture of me. And I'm going to show you how you can apply an effect or texture to it. We will also, I'm just going to pop a design here too. So I do not forget, show you how to add, add texture to a background, which is actually done in a different way. So in the past, if I wanted to add texture to a design, so by texture, I mean a little bit of grit, maybe making it look like it's some paper or it's got a light leak. I would go to elements and I would literally just type in texture or I could type in paper type in texture hit enter I'd usually go across to graphics here and I would grab say for example this paper and I would put it on top of my design like so and then I would potentially fade it in a little bit but when I start to it, if I have it full it kind of just makes the image look washed out and if I fade it in it kind of looks a little bit um like you can barely see it so I'm like oh that's not ideal so maybe I'll choose a different one this one here is kind of okay to be honest with you maybe this one here like this is just making my design look really dark and, and and flat now. So none of these are really hitting the mark. So I'm going to leave that there for you as a comparison. I'm going to open up a new page here with another image. And I'm going to go instead to this brand new Canva feature. So if you click on your image, then press edit and scroll over to the app section down here, not the apps panel on the side, although you could probably also go there, but I like to just click on the image and go to the app section down the bottom. And this has lots of Canvas apps. If I press see all, you can see this texture option. Now at this stage, this is only available to Canva Pro users. So if you're a free user, I'm sorry, you're gonna to have to use the workaround that I showed in the previous section. And you can find some good textures to overlay. So feel free to give that a shot if you don't have Canva Pro. Or if you'd like to try Canva Pro, I have a link in the description you can use to upgrade and see how that goes for you. So I'm gonna hit this texture button. And in here, it's gonna give me a ton of different options to add texture to my designs. You'll see here, I've got paper, paint, VHS, grit, film grit, light, fabric, and grunge. And so I would recommend trying any of these as long as it aligns with your branding. So let's go over to the paper section first. I'm going to hit see all to see all of the different options. And there are so many options depending on what your what, what, what tickles your fancy. I'm going to try this crumpled paper one here. And if I click on this, it's going to apply that crumpled paper effect to my photo. You can see here, this is looking like the image has still kept its coloring, but it's still got that paper effect on it, which is so amazing. Now there's a few settings here that I need you to know so you can fiddle it because different effects are going to look different on different images. And if your image is quite light, light, or if your image is quite dark, or if the effect you chose is quite light versus quite dark, you're going to need to change these settings. So it's really important you pay attention. Firstly, we have the opacity option. We can just make things more opaque if you want it to be more subtle, which is always good to do when you're wanting it to be a little bit more under understated rather than in your face. We also have the scale and rotation, but the one I wanted to really direct your attention to is a blend mode. Now, this is a feature that has previously only really ever been available to inside of professional design programs like Photoshop. I, that's where I know these from, but I haven't been able to use them much inside Canva yet, but now we can. So if I scroll across and press this little arrow across, you can see lots of different options. We have multiply, screen, these are all going to make sense soon, overlay, darken, lighten, color dodge, color burn, hard light, soft light, difference, exclusion, hue, saturation, color, luminosity, source over. Okay. So there's a ton of different options here. You're not going to need all of these. And there's, a, I'm going to tell you my favorites to use that work well for most images. But in essence, these are going to change how the two images interact. So pretty much Canva's given us an image of a piece of paper and it's going to blend them together in a particular way to make the two photos look like they're kind of one in the same. And so for this one here, honestly, the default here of multiply does work okay for my particular image. But if I wanted to try something different, I can just click on it and it will apply the new version. So screen does not work for this one. But if I click across, I could try overlay, nope, darken, darken looks okay, but it's kind of, you can see it's kind of just picked up the darkest spots and they're only visible on my lightest spots. Click across again, you can see lighten, you can only really see my areas in the shadows of this piece of paper, so that's not going to work for this one. Color dodge, color burn. 
This one is one of my favorites. I love color burn for some images. You can see this is quite subtle. You've got that little bit of texture on the design. You can see this little piece of paper here and this little rip over here and this little crease over there. Or you've got hard light, soft light. Soft light is another one of my favorites. Doesn't work well for this image, but it does work well for some others. Um, and those are my top favorites. So soft light, hard light, color burn and darken and overlay. They sometimes work depending on your image. Let's pick a different color texture. I'm going to go back from crumpled paper. I didn't apply that so it didn't stick. And let's choose, like if I choose this worn divide one and press this to apply it, you can see now it's got this lightness on top of my design. But if I was to click over to multiply instead of screen, it kind of, it seems to pick, it picks the one that works best for this particular piece of paper, which is really helpful. So you, hopefully you can actually even just leave it on the, on the default, but knowing that you can tweak it is helpful. Multiply is not going to work. Overlays made it really dark. And so lots of these aren't going to work, but it's always worth just testing them to see which one's going to suit you, especially if it's a design you want to use over and over again. I'm going to press out of this and let's go out of paper and choose something more like a grain. I personally love a grainy look on an image. So I'm going to go to this grit or this film grain. It kind of depends on what you're feeling like, but I'm going to go into the film, the, the grit section, because that feels a bit more rustic, which is what I love. I'm going to go charcoal fabric. Let's click on that. Again, it's picked up screen as its default. Multiply is far too dark. Let's try something like lighten. That's kind of okay. And you can see there's a little bit of just rough overlaying and, and grit on top of my photo, which looks really kind of, it looks like a really natural grit. Soft light could also work. That, that that kind of is nice too, but it's kind of made the picture quite dark. So to combat that, I could even change the opacity down to make it more subtle, but still have that strength to it. So I'm quite enjoying that. Or I could press back and I could try something different. This one was quite a dark base. So if I chose a subtle grunge instead, that's going to give it more of a, it's going to probably change the blend mode. This one's now got on multiply and you can see that looks quite different again. So I want you to just have a play with these, see which ones you enjoy, apply it and test through the different options to see which works best on your particular photo. But yeah, I think I agree with Canva on this one. I really like the default version it's done for me here of multiply. If I wanted to make it more subtle, I could put the opacity down. And then when I'm happy with it, that's when I'd press save. And that image is now embedded. Like these two images are kind of embedded together. And that, that, that new saved version of the effect is now uploaded into my uploads for me to use. So I can't now go back and change the effect. I would have to go to a new image again and, and start that process from scratch. Now, if you want to ever add a picture or a texture to a color, you're going to either have to download that color. Cause if I click on this, you can see there's no edit option to add that, that texture in. So I'd have to download this color as an image, but I do, to do that, I would just press share, download, download as a PNG, select my particular page. So let's choose current page, done download. And then I could just upload that as an image and change the color of it that way and add in texture to it that way. So I'm going to insert that into my design and you can see if I was to go to edit now, I have that option to go to our texture and add in a beautiful kind of paper, purple texture if I wanted to. So let's go back to paper. We'll choose soft, subtle grain. I like that as is, so I'm going to press save. And now I have my brand color in a beautiful texture that I can use over and over again. And so if you are enjoying that and you want to use this regularly, ex export this again and save it to a folder full of your brand elements or save it to your brand kit so that you can have this to access anytime you need a really beautiful textured background in your brand color. And again, if you don't have Canva Pro, simply try this instead. Go to elements, type in texture or type in the texture of what you want. And you can then just overlay that over the top of your image. So say, for example, I wanted this paper. I could click on that and overlay that on top. Top. You just want to make sure that you're making it quite subtle um, and maybe changing that opacity down. And that's still like, that's still not a bad option if you wanted something. So I hope you enjoyed that one. Enjoy this brand new feature. I would love to know in the comments, what are you going to do with it? How, what kind of image are you applying to it? What kind of effects are you liking? Um, I'd love to start a bit of an ideas board below of what we can do with our different texture effect. And if you're wanting more help with your Canva to make designs strategically, stop making design mistakes at DIYs, make that makes you look amateur and stops you getting clients. I want to know my top Canva shortcuts, head it to my free design tools masterclass to get you to 100k. I'll put this QR code here for you and you can just scan that or click the link below and you'll be able to sign up, get free access, watch that and get so much goodness for it so that you can stop wasting time in Canva and start creating graphics that actually convert for your business instead of just wasting your time. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you next week for another tutorial. Bye.